Hi and welcome to my channel, it's Rebecca also known as a 4 kids at 147 and we're going to kick off the June Waffle, um, not a very exciting name but the only one I could come up with, um, we're going to kick off the June Waffle today. So the first thing I do need to do is decide which square of the diamond painting I'm doing. So I have a decision wheel ready with 30 different sections. So if you don't have a decision wheel but want to join in with me, by all means, um, copy my number. We're doing number three today. Now I have brought in my easel. And I have also put on my light pad, even though I don't need it turning on with these lights, I have still done it so that you can see how I work when I'm working on the likes of a table. And um, this would quite often hang off the end, but for now I'm just going to tuck it underneath. And we are on section three. So I'm just going to have a look now at how I can shuffle about to line these up so that I have pretty much full squares on each of the sections. And then I think we'll start with J because then I don't have to trade off my diamonds quite as much because there's quite a bit of J. And I've actually tipped quite a lot in there, but that's okay. We can give them a shuffle and I'll just use all the side that's straight. The pen for today, I'm going to use the one that I have so recently been gifted by Ella Meek. This one is a glass pen, hence it stays in its little box when I'm not using it. It's going to be staying there for safety's sake but I haven't actually used it yet. So I have loaded this up with wax. So I may find that wax spurts out and stuff like this. This is also my first time working on a star roll painting. So it'd be quite interesting to see how this goes. They don't seem as snug a fit the diamonds as with some others. It does seem to be a little gap so maybe doing my little step process that I normally do with squares might not work as well for this one. I can't fully butt it up to the next one because there's a gap. Squares with a gap so I think I'll have to pay a little bit more attention than usual. Now I don't have too much time today so to get this video done, hence the reason I sort of got into it and got started as soon as possible. I was gifted a lovely item as well, I say lovely, I haven't opened it yet. Um, the, the person who sent it me was very excited about it, hence the reason I'm already making the assumption that it's lovely. I'm going to have to unbox that in tomorrow's video, so do nip back if you want to see that yourselves, but I just don't have the time today, unfortunately, to do that as well. But this is the beginning of the madness of my June waffle. Let's see if I can zoom you in quite a bit. I'll do a mixture of zoomed out and zoomed in on each video. But for the June waffle, I have a 30 by 40 painting, which has been divided into 30 different sections. And I will be doing a whip and chat a day with each section. So do ask your questions down below please to keep me with topics of conversation for the next 30 days. I do have a kitting up video when I kitted this painting up. It was a week last Saturday it went up. So if you scroll down 
my recent videos, you'll be able to find my preparation for the June waffle where I got this painting ready. But if you do want to join in, the idea is that whatever the size of your painting, we do a little bit each day. So maybe you can't manage the size that I've done. Maybe you need to divide it into 60. Maybe you need to divide it into 100. Whatever it may be, divide it up into a section that is to sections that are manageable per day. If you can, you know, do a smaller painting and stick to dividing it by 30, then awesome. Because at the end of it, you will have a painting because there's 30 days in June. And that's the general idea. You do not have to do a particular painting in any which way. You could even just say if you're working on something that's that's a really big one that's going to take a bit longer you know then don't necessarily say that you're going to finish it just that you're going to do 30 sections of it whatever size those sections are but carve out a little bit of time for yourself throughout the month of June to do some diamond painting And that's all, that's all that we ask. If you want to join in, of course. <laughs> this pen is taking a little bit of getting used to, to hold. Not quite sure whether to hold it on the bigger part or on the thinner part, but it is quite weighted at the end, but it's also pretty. Maybe I should have, when I'm on more of a time crunch, maybe I should have started off with a pen I was used to. But hey, life wouldn't be as fun if we all did things like that, would it? So we'll just dive in the deep end and get a section done. That's the aim. Get a diamond painting section done on this picture. <coughs> I do like this colour I've started with though. Very, very nice colour. Seems as though we have, you know, quite a few blocks of colour in with this, but then we do have a scattering where there's a lot less of a colour which should give us some nice shaded lines. I think I might need to get some more wax. This is a brand new pen. So I do find I have to fill up the wax a lot more often on a brand new pen. And once the pen has got used to me and the, the tip has filled up with wax a bit more, I should hopefully not need to do it as much. I'm hoping that picked up wax. I couldn't actually tell. I don't think it did. And I think I've knocked my pen tip out as well. Oh. I'm not doing very well. Okay, I've managed to get my pen tip to go back in properly. And I've got wax in the pen. Round two was better. So let's try again. It's making my, well my hand or at least the pen shake a little bit more because of the weight on the back of the pen, makes it a little bit different. But anyway, I did ask you guys for your questions when I did kit up this painting, to sort of get me started on something to chat about. So the first question I've come across is, what area of Australia is your family in? So my family are in Victoria. They are in places around the, the coast on the south of Australia. I don't know if that's the actual direction, but 
depends where Australia is on the globe, but if you just had a map of Australia, they're down on the south coast of Australia. Um, various distances from the ocean, but none of them are far, but they are in sort of a few different places across there scattered. There's about half an hour to an hour drive between each each household between my parents, my sister and my brother. What do they say? Just enough different distance that they can't turn up without planning a trip. Is that what they say? Maybe that's the reason. But then again, distance isn't anywhere near as big a deal in Australia as it is in the likes of the UK. So you sort of get used to travelling long distances in Australia. It's pretty much a given. So that's the first little section of the tree done there. Let me see if I can just find another question. Because there's a lot of people just saying this is going to be fun. <laughs> Which it is. It is definitely going to be fun. So somebody has asked, my friend's just wondering, could I use a pattern from a cross stitch onto a plain diamond sheet to make a picture? Yes, you can. That is, in fact, what my heaven and earth design is, which I do have a playlist for. It's not had much added to it recently, but that will be something that I plan to improve on once this June event is over. But my heaven and earth design is actually, in fact, a cross stitch pattern done on a blank canvas. Heaven and earth design is a very popular cross stitch um, pattern to do. I think that's also because they do give you full details on how many stitches each you know each cross stitch because they're made for cross stitch how many stitches each cross stitch needs in each color which with diamond painting that translates to each diamond that is needed and how many not all companies will provide you with that they may provide you with how many skeins of a cross stitch thread you need but they won't necessarily tell you how many stitches is in the pattern and you could find out by counting it but who wants to count that much and that often i know i wouldn't for definite um so heaven and earth designs do seem to be extremely popular for doing cross stitch charts from but there is no reason you can't do it for another company the only thing you would need to be aware of is if there is any back stitch half stitch french knots anything like that can't really be transferred into a diamond painting because you're just working with individual diamonds. So I know a cross stitch chart that I did around Christmas that I still actually need to finish. A cross stitch chart that I was doing for Christmas or other Christmas scene does have back stitch and it does have half stitches. I might got a might have got away with the half stitches. But when I look at the cross stitch without the back stitch on it, it is hard to define what each part of the pattern is. It's the back stitch that brings it to life. There is a lot of it in a lot of different colours. So I would never do that chart as a diamond painting because it would just not cross over well. It just would not show a true reflection of the charted image. 
whereas a heaven and earth design doesn't tend to have back stitch or half stitches it just has full ones but yeah if you head over to my heaven and earth design playlist i do have more videos there to sort of help you on establishing how many diamonds and there is a facebook group for it as well and you, you can use other patterns to do it just the same way you can use a heaven and earth designs so yeah thank you for that question that was that was nice and uh, different to many others that i've had which is good okay next question let me find one. Oh, do you put glue gloss on your pictures after you finish them? I don't tend to use what's called glue gloss. I use um, a Craft Buddy Crystal Art Sealer if I ever do need to seal a painting. But I don't tend to do it with every painting. So any painting that's going into my portfolio, that's going into a frame, even ones that go onto my wall, I don't tend to seal. If I'm framing something, say more so a round diamond painting, because there is those gaps in between the diamonds that, that are still sticky and could attract dust. If I was putting up on a wall a round diamond painting that would not have a piece of glass or acrylic between it and the outside world, then I may choose to seal it. For square, I don't tend to bother because all the glue is covered by the diamonds. So it's not going to pick up anything that way. I do the, the thing I tend to seal the most often is what I call off the canvas items. Things like bookmarks and my passport holder, things like that. There's, there's a few reasons for that. One, they tend to be handled more. So my passport holder holds my cover sheets for my diamond painting. That is handled a lot, so I do want to ensure that that is fully coated so that the diamonds don't come off when I'm using it. Also, they tend to be um, partial diamond paintings. <coughs> Excuse me. So they're poured glue, and because they're partial, more often than not, the diamonds don't necessarily fit um, the glue, sorry, overhangs to make sure that you've got the space. So you do end up with a glue outline all the way around the outside. So that's another reason that I tend to seal them, is if there's glue exposed or if it's gonna be handled a lot. They're the two things I'd say make me seal. Other than that, Nah, I'm too impatient. I don't want to be waiting for adhesive, you know, for the glue stuff to dry when it's just going to go in a portfolio folder or behind a frame and behind some acrylic or some glass anyway. So the answer to that one is sometimes. Let's see what else have we got? Uh, well, it does say if you, somebody has asked if you do use a different pen each day. Can I tell you a little bit about the pen? I will do my best on that one. I do know I have a few pens that are gifted, that have been gifted to me. And I may struggle to remember the names of who's gifted them to me. I will do my best to find out because... I do actually want to make myself a list so that I don't have to keep forgetting um, the names of, of, of things that have been gifted to me. I do want to make a list so that I can reference it more often because especially something that I use regularly, 
I, I feel kind of rude if I forget the name when I'm doing a video and sometimes the name will come to me as soon as I've finished the video and sometimes it won't but yeah I will use different pens I think I'm gonna I'm gonna continue I'm pretty sure I know when I did the advent calendar I think I struggled to find 24 pens that I had I might be able to make 30 I think this will be a nice way to fully test if it's a pen that I've bought from a shop then I will link the shop if it's a pen that I've been gifted then I will find out the name of the person that gifted it me if I can't remember and I'll be sure to update it what should we go for now let's go for Z let's keep going for the ones that fill it in a bit more bulk this one is fearful I don't want to tip too many out either because I actually don't need that many but you kind of get what you get when it's full let's get my pen to turn that one round because this one doesn't have a straightener but it's glass it's gorgeous diamond painting pens are made to be used but this one was gifted to me by Ella Meek. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. I do apologise if I'm not. Um, and it was sent to me in the post. And I did do an unboxing on it a few... Last week, I think it was, that I unboxed this one. Something like that. I think it was last week. But yeah, very grateful. This is the first chance I've had to use it, which is also because I actually haven't had a chance to time and paint since I unboxed it. The past month, I would say, I have not managed to dime and paint pretty much every day like I normally do. I would quite often be lucky if I could get to dime and paint once a day. Once a week, sorry been lucky if I've been able to diamond paint once a week at the moment which is quite shocking for me and I'm hoping that June and this whip and chat not only doing the whip and chat but I'm hoping it will also kick kick me to get more completed outside of the whip and chat as well but it looks like we might be in for a long one and it is an extremely warm day today so I am gonna have a pause and go and take a little bit of a breather because these studio lights are really hot and um, well they're not actually they're LED so they're not supposed to be hot but after I have been under them for a while they do seem I do Feel as though I'm getting a lot warmer now whether it's because the doors closed because I'm filming I'm not sure but I am gonna go and take a little breather but for you guys it will just be a, a flip um, and I'll be back with you right so I've cooled down a little bit British summertime is here for a couple of days I'm sure it will disappear again and we'll have rain and thunder but for the for the me for the time being it's here and it's gone extremely warm in places especially in the conservatory um, we do have sort of the high end glass in the roof but it is still glass in the roof so there are, there are certain parts of the conservatory that are rather warm the next question I have, I mean, I have a few, quite a few people commenting, saying paintings that they're going to do during this, some larger than others, but I'm all for it. Go for any size. It's not a competition. It's not a must do. Have fun with it. It's just to try and carve a little bit of time each day. For you and for your hobby 
and depending on how much time you may have available will depend on how much time you get to spend on it. There are 30 days in June so if there is a day that you're not able to diamond paint then maybe you can still catch up a little bit maybe that's an option but if not even if you don't get to finish by the end of the month you will be further on than you were at the beginning. That is the idea behind it all. And it's a little bit of fun to all do something together. I have created a post in my Facebook group. So if you do want to join my Facebook group, the link is always in the description. Do make sure that you read and agree to the rules to be able to be accepted into the Facebook group. There's only a couple and they're things that most people respect anyway but you do need to confirm that you agree to those only because if they are broken over multiple times having that agreement to confirm that you do agree to them um, gives reason for if they're ignored multiple times then there is reasons behind the fact that you, that limited people won't stay. It's only happened once or twice before and I don't think they were true diamond painters. I think it was companies trying to jump on the sales wagon but I have had to remove a couple of companies for it. But apart from that we're a nice bunch, we're a nice friendly bunch and that's the way that we like it but I am I have already put up a post for today's because it is even though this video this video is going up at 4 p.m. UK time it's my standard upload time gives me a chance to ensure that the video is done and as ready as it can be but I am putting the post up the night before UK time because Australia gets the 1st of June before anybody else and I want them to be able to have a post to post on and um, because they may choose to do the first day you know without a video and then maybe watch the remaining videos while doing it just because of time zones but we can't please everybody moved on to the next one that I have the most of and then I think I'm going to start with whatever is at the bottom. But one of the next questions that I had was in relation to the Xyron sticker maker that I use for labelling up my pots. In fact I use them for kitting this one up and they asked whether I had the removable or the permanent adhesive in it. So I currently have the removable adhesive. I had the permanent initially and when it ran out I changed it to try the removable. They both do come off the pots. The removable is easier. So if you have an option as to which one to use then the removable is easier to take off. However, you can still take them off with the permanent and I did for ages while I was using that cartridge. And then if there's any sticky residue, I use a product called Goo Gone to remove it. And you will be able to see that in some of my de-kitting videos. I do go over it with Goo Gone just to get rid of any residue once I have finished de-kitting to get my storage ready for the next painting or the next day or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, if you've got a choice, I would go for removable over permanent, but I'm more than happy with permanent. I've got removable in there at, a at the moment. I do have another spare cartridge of permanent that was gifted to me with the sticker maker and that will be the next one that goes in it 
before I then try and find where in the UK sells them. But that is definitely a problem for another day because the first one has lasted me absolutely ages. So I do not expect to be running out very soon. And therefore I do not expect to be needing more refills soon. So I'm just going to zoom out for a little bit of a different look. I'm on the sort of last bits of confetti on this one at the moment. Let me see if there's any more questions. So there's a lot of a lot of sort of comments in with the first one as well. Okay, so this bottom one is the first one that I've got in this bottom corner is D. So I'm only going to tip out a few provided my pot will let me. And see if this will let me do the last, last few little bits. I am going to save that white for last because that is one that I'm going to use an A B with to be a little bit different going to do any big blocks of that symbol with glow in the dark and I'm going to do any small scatterings with a B. All these are properly scattered in between. I'm having to check a few times whether I've actually got them all. So many blues but it's going to be so pretty. That's D, and then I'm just going to keep going up, I think. So go for Y, and then you should just squeeze the side, and the lid opens up. It's great. <clears throat> Any more questions? Oh, somebody has asked where can they order AB drills. So there are a few different places. Um, I know, you know, if, if you are unsure in your country, then do ask in the Facebook group. There are quite a few, especially in the States, though I don't know those as much. For the UK, I'd probably, if I wanted some AB diamonds, I would probably just go straight to Bow Diamonds that do some AB. More often than not, when I'm using AB, I tend to be using ones that have come with kits and they're my spares, so they're the ones I have left over. That tends to be my go-to. Though I could probably... Because the thing is, because I don't actually plan what painting I'm going to do next, I tend to let the app decide. There's no sort of forward planning in regards to whether it needs an AB or not. So maybe I should just treat myself to a few and then I can just get them anyway. Next one is number P. There's actually letter P, number P. Letter P. There's quite a few of those, so let's tip those out. But yeah, maybe I should get myself a few. I only have glow-in-the-dark ones and so many because Margaret sent them to me. <laughs> I'm determined I'm going to use them. Megan's going to use them in another picture as well. Hers will, hers will definitely pop in the picture she's going to do them and she's going to use them in the heaven and earth design but um it's definitely gonna it's like a cosmic picture which will look absolutely amazing with glow in the dark i still think this painting will look good though and it's nice to be able to mix things up a little bit So let's get this a P done. It's amazing how little bits of confetti can still take quite a bit of time to complete. You still manage to get quite a few different 
symbols in there but it gives that whole effect that you're really looking for okay last bit e e e e can't find it for looking I don't like, oh there it is <laughs> I don't like it when that happens when you're searching for it especially when you first start a painting and you're like I can't find it okay I was kind of hoping that pen would allow me to just fish out a few diamonds without having to tip them into my tray but it's not liking it so we'll tip them into the tray and put in the three that we need to move the trays over so that I've got the right angle for tipping my tray out normally I do it on the on the side of the couch to the right of me so it works out really well but we'll make it work A M. get to put in some a b's in a bit that'll be fun but from a distance this all still just looks like a dark line going through the tree but having all these different shades in it really do make a difference. It, it, it's hard to tell, but if, if I'd actually done these in a black or a brown and only a black or a brown, it would not have had the same look as what it does actually mixing up these colours. It gives it that little bit more softness and that little bit of, of shading along with it. So this is when I want it to allow me to dip into it because I only need two of these. Maybe I need to fill up my wax again. I can definitely do it when my wax is fuller. Let's say because this is a new pen tip. The wax seems to go a lot sooner. Go on. Probably would have been quicker to actually tip them out, but I feel better that I've been able to just dip in the pot for at least a couple. Okay, the letter R, I do need a few more, so we will tip those into my tray. Give it a little shake. As long as most of them line up, I'm not going to keep shaking it because I will have enough lined up for the places that I need to put them. Uh, details of this diamond painting tray will also be in the link below. Stock does fluctuate on them depending on how quick we can get them printed. We have various different colours that keep interchanging. Uh, from day to day on the 3D printers so if there is a particular colour that you are interested in you can join on the wait list to get one of those as soon as you get an email notification as soon as one of those one of the colour you want does become available so I've got one going there and I've got one going down here which is a capital E this one and I've got loads of extra wax on my pen now let's take that off so that's all the bottom there I've got some L's and some K's and I can do my AB's so K is here this is one that I actually have two pots of the amount of diamonds that I needed has stretched into two pots. So I'm using the extra pot first, which is to the right. And then L. Oh, it's a grey. See if I can dip into the pot. It's easier when I can find the bottom of the pot because I can use that as leverage to get it on. And then it's time for a little bit of sparkle 
to finish the day. So I don't have many ABs. I'm not sure how long they're going to last, but that's fine because I'm just doing the scattering of the five two hundreds and any big blocks of five two hundred I'm going to do in the glow in the dark diamonds. And maybe the app will decide to give us a section with glow in the dark tomorrow, but we've got a little bit of extra sparkle in there with the AB. And that's the section done for today. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have a little bit more time and I'll be able to get that unboxing done as a little bit of a treat beforehand. But I say do please ask your questions down below. Give me something to chat about for the next one. I hope you've enjoyed doing your diamond painting and I thank you all so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.